Hey everybody, welcome. Oh, it's starting. Here we go. Hey, everybody, welcome back. It's Marcia here, um, live HR. Um, it's not far. Hope everybody's having a good summer. Um, been away a little bit, been traveling, and work has been nonstop crazy. But I am back in action, guys, and I'm here to answer all of your HR questions. So feel free to. Um, pop away any questions you might have out there and blah, blah, blah. But boy, every time I do Facebook, it changes all over the place. But nonetheless, we have a lot of questions out there. So we're going to get to all of them pretty quickly. If you do have any um, questions out there and all too, just by all means, put them, I guess there's chat in here. You know, like I said, every time I do this, it feels like um, it's like all new, it's all new out there. So it's all good. Anyways, here we go. Um... Hey everybody, and uh, we are back in action. Come join the fun. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put like a little smiley face because that's an HR, that's what we do. Um, so there you go, it's up and going. Anyways, I welcome everybody. So here we're gonna do is, um, I don't know about you, but summer's been like really hot. So I'm outside of Pennsylvania and boy, it has been a scorcher this year. So. Hang in there. We've got a few weeks left of all this crazy stuff. And um, hopefully the fall will be a little cooler and calmer out there. So we'll see. All right. First question's from Robin. Hey, Robin. How are you, dear? Um, um, by the way, um, for those who don't know, um, Robin makes these amazing oil paintings of sunsets. I actually had bought two of them, and I have them in my beach home. And everybody always asks me about these paintings because they're so calming and they're so soothing and she's so meticulous to her details. So great job, Robin. They are just gorgeous. Um, so hoping everybody will reach out to you and get some of these beautiful sunsets because it really does put you in a very calm mood after you look at them. So she asked the question, from a timeline perspective, what time frame should I be looking to hit six figures in my business? Well, I think that depends upon a few things. It depends upon your product. It depends upon the demand and depends upon basically how fast you can grow. For my business, we're professional services. Um, it took me about five years to hit that million dollar mark. There are some companies that I know that'll hit that million dollar mark the first year, and then there are some companies that might not hit it for about 15 years. It really depends upon um, what you want and where your goals are at. Um, the one thing a, a young entrepreneur has to understand is many times you're gonna have to scale and let go of control um, and then basically hire other people to help you get to your goals but if you don't have a plan of action as to like what that looks like i always say you have a one-year plan a three-year plan and a 10-year plan and you got to write this stuff down guys i think a lot of people will come to me and just say hey you know i have um, a plan in mind and i'm like well did you write it down and they don't write things down you got to write down your one plan your three plan and your 10-year plan now, I use a system called EOS, Entrepreneur Operating System, but you know what? That's ex it's expensive, so you're not there yet. So what you want to do is go into Google. You know, use all your free resources as much as possible. Reach out to Sean and his team. There's so many great resources out there to put a plan together to get things moving. And then you know what I've done? I started out in my basement, in my yeah, this is my house, um, in the, the basement. And I actually have a whiteboard up there that every year my revenue since I started is on there about you know what what I had in 2007 what I had in 2008 and then I have a percentage of like my increase but I constantly have that in front of me to, for two reasons one basically where my goals are going to be the next like I said three to ten years and two to remind yourself where you came from and how hard it was when you first start and basically you should be really proud you know my first year I didn't even make a hundred grand and you know I gave up a pretty comfy job to basically do all this and um, you have to be okay um, to figure out to yourself what's the minimum amount I need to get by uh, for like at least three to five years but it's really depending upon your goals in regards to when it be six figures or not you got to sit down though you got to make a plan you got to be real about it too you know it's like opening up that credit card statement and you don't really want to look at it but you got to come to reality one day it's the same thing with your business guys you got to sit down and say okay what does this really look like how much can i realistically bring in per year if it's just me and then if i have somebody else then i have somebody else 
and that's really going to help you get to your goals but you got to be real about it and it might not happen overnight it might take 10 years um but you got to figure out what's really going to sell what people really want to buy and you have to look at the good times and the bad times i think we're going to go into a little bit of a rocky road in the next two years um it's not going to be as plentiful as it has been the past like you know 10 years um but i do think we're going to have to be prepared for that as well so kind of think about you know what's like that recession proof kind of product that's out there how can you basically be in front of things how much more extra sales you might want to do right now so those are some of the things I think you want to take, take into perspective, okay? Um, but Robin, you can always reach out to me anytime, girlfriends, because I love, love your paintings, my dear. Um, okay, second question too is from Robin. How would you respond to a prospect who says they do not have wall space for more art? Um, that's a great question. And that's, hey, number one, it's awesome that they have no more wall space. That means they really like it. But two, um, you could say, you know, it's since you love art so much, you know, you, I don't know what your, um, your, your, I uh, would say your, um, your gifting language is, but maybe it's, it's giving away art to other people because it means so much to them. So you're just going to have to turn that conversation around a little bit. And, you know, one of the things I'd have is a really good dear friend of mine who, um, he is a, a true French chocolatier. And at the holidays, um, he just, it's about, you know, just like nine chocolates. But he makes them all by hand and you know i like helping him too because it's his small business but his chocolates are divine um and i actually give them out to my clients at christmas time to say hey thanks for your business and support and all and that's been really helpful so what i do now um to say thank you to some of my clients is i have another client that do um chocolate covered pretzels and they're a small mom and pop and so what we decide to do is um i have it set up now um, when, like, for example, you know, um, congratulations, anniversary, celebration for their business and all too. I've been fortunate. I actually have them made, we made logos for their box coverings that have our name on there and just says, hey, congratulations from like the O'Connor group. And it has our logo on it. So it's number one, it's 100% deductible for a marketing expense. But number two, it helps get their business out there too, because they're really yummy pretzels. Um, and we've tried to help out all of our, um, our friends and young entrepreneurs out there by trying to do something like one year, I have a mom who's also a teacher who does these amazing salts, you know, like salt and pepper and, you know, steak seasoning and yada, yada. And so one year um, I tried to help her too. And I gave them as part of the holiday packages um especially during with during covid because nobody got together so i said hey make make your own make your food at home and i'm with the salts and that was a big deal but she was really appreciative because i had bought so many salts from her so things like that's really helpful but if you have a client who says no more wall space and and they love art you would say hey maybe set up a program that they, you could send out um pictures as a thank you and maybe a ribbon but you know that says thank you on it or whatever and dial it up i mean you got to be creative here, but it's a nice little way to say thank you. And it might be a good alternative. Okay. Next question is from Brad. Hello, Brad. Um, question is, how do you know when the time is right to leave your full-time job and go on in your business? You know, um, just let me give a little background here. So uh, Brad is a full-time firefighter and paramedic. Thank you so much for your service, my dear, for a local municipality and have 13 years of service invested with 12 more for retirement. Um, you find myself struggling to find a reason to stay and number one i know it's needed and not too but if you have that passion inside of you you're going to have to figure out like how to get that moving and you know what i think sometimes people overthink this stuff too much but you have to just like start and you can start on the side um and you know be comfortable with that i would say though make sure you write down like what's the minimum amount that you need a year to basically survive without you know a side business and you have to figure out and be realistic with it. I think mine was um, the mortgage and benefits. And then I realized um, it really wasn't as much money as I thought. So if I had to pay it all through my own pocket, that's what I needed. And actually, um, to be honest with you, you're not supposed to do this. Um, I looked at my 401k and I said, well, if all health fails, I can tap into that and use that when I need it, right? Even though you've had that 20% fee, you gotta pay because you're taken out before a certain age. But you got to figure out what's best for you. I don't think there is a special time or what. I can tell you now when people ask me, like, what's one of the things you would have done differently? I probably would have started sooner. I wanted, I thought about it too much. Everything had to be, I thought, too perfect. 
and you know what i started doing every session yay um but we're still here so you have to really figure out what's really important for you i also had unfortunately i had a, um, a boss that i just didn't get along with so that really helped me make that decision a lot faster as well so those are the things you want to start thinking about and i think it's really important that um you write these things down and what's going to mean to you and where your goals are at and where you're going and i really do believe in doing um you know power boards and they're basically what you write down where you're going to be at one year or three year five year ten year listen is it going to be perfect no did we all predict 2020 no but we all got through it and um and so you have to figure out like there there's every 10 years is going to be a blip in the radar screen so you got to be prepared for that and what that looks like so I tell people like, you know, don't think about it too much because um, I did read the book, The Alchemist, a nominal book, but I read that and basically it told me if I don't do this now, I'm going to have on my deathbed saying I could have, should have, would have. And I'm definitely not that kind of person. I am a person who's a doer. And if I fall on my face, I get back up. And trust me, when I first started, I fell on my face a lot of times because I had to figure out specifically what was I selling and what were people buying. And once you figure those pieces out, you realize what you do have. Um, so I remember um, my brother-in-law just asked me this. He said, well, I'm sure you had clients already set up when you, when you, when you quit. I said, I didn't. Um, I took my, I had a, a small, very small bonus. And I said, how far can I stretch that? And I literally put together a budget plan for six months to say, this is what I can work with if nothing came in. And then you just go to work, you pound the pavement, you get the phones, you talk to all your dearest friends. And trust me, people want to help you. You just got to be clear about your objective and what you do want. And then you got to follow through. And that's when you know, you got to put the hours in. You're definitely going to probably work way more than eight hours a day. You're probably going to work the weekends. Um, I can promise you if you keep it going and you believe in it and people believe in you, that will change down the road. But at first, you really got to put the time and effort into it. So don't think about it too much. Make sure you have a support system around you. Make sure you do have that budget ready to go. But don't be just like it's in the air. You got to write this stuff down, guys. It's so important to do that. And I just don't understand why a lot of people don't do that, but they don't. And I just never get, I never got that. But hey, it is what it is. Um, okay, next question. Moving forward. Thank you, Brad. Um, Kelly. Hello, Kelly. What things would you recommend I do to help me better manage my time? Um, and Kelco is an excavation company specializing in trenching, site prep, road work, aggregate hauling, and heavy equipment operations. Wow, that's a lot. You said I have a daily monthly planner, but I'm thinking there has to be a more effect effective way to manage my team. Time, I feel like I can be more productive. You know, I think time is... Um, it, it, everybody's different of how they manage their time. And so ironically enough, I have a really busy fall and I do everything on Microsoft Outlook and I have my calendar all through that and yada, yada. And it goes to my phone. Let me tell you what I did yesterday. I kid you not guys. I, I put together my own like little handwritten calendar um, for the next four months because it's going to be so incredibly insane. And I'm down an assistant right now. And I just have to like, I just did the old fashioned way. I just wrote all my stuff out and where I want to be and what I want to do. And that to me really helps my mind set up as to basically what to look forward to, what to plan for, all the different. I mean, I'm, it's an insane schedule for the next September, October, November, December. It's insane. Um, but the more organized you become, um, the more effective you will be. But you can't be so hard on yourself at all, too. It's not going to be perfect. Hey, do you know how many times, even with these great schedules that I have, I've double booked myself? Or I didn't show up for an appointment. Um, I've done all that, and I'm, I think I self, I, I call myself very, very organized. But I'm human, and I make mistakes, and it's okay to do that because you just get back up from them. So you're gonna have to find a system that works for you. Um, if you don't have any system, just get like a daily calendar, just write things down. I have a really, really, um, really successful friend of mine who works with a lot of CEO companies. I kid you not, guys, she still has a huge, one of those big 11 by 14 Franklin planners that she brings everywhere with her, and that is what she lives by. She has everything on her phone, too, but primarily it's all written down. So you got to find out what's best for you and what you're most comfortable with. And, you know, 
yeah, people laugh at me because I write a lot of stuff down, but I'm a, a visual memorizer. And so the more I write down, the more I remember. I just don't always feel that I get that from looking at my computer sometimes, but you're going to have to figure out what works for you. And listen, I've tried different systems over the years, and I have a friend of mine who only works just in Outlook, no matter what. I don't always do that. And you know what? I just have to figure out what works for me, but I get bored fast too. So I have a lot of booklets that I basically date the day it starts and the date it ends. And I put them downstairs into um, a, a filing cabinet because I'm a visualizer learner. So I remember certain people, numbers and all too. And I'll go back to that book because I'm like, I know exactly where to find it on the page because I wrote it down. So um, you got to figure out what works for you for that. But um, just try it weekly and you figure it too. like look at it. I always tell people too, like look at a week at a pie chart and figure out how much time you spend on this, how much time you spend on that. And once you start breaking all your time down, you become really efficient of how well you spend your time. And then you have to figure out like what's the best time for sales? What's the best time for follow up? You know, what's the best time to take care of yourself too? Because I have a lot of friends who constantly work out 12 to 1 and that works for them. It's great. We got to figure out a system that works for you. And every season that changes too, because right now it's summertime. So people are a little bit different thinking than they will be like in October. So you got to figure out what's the best time to get a hold of people and sales and delivery and all. Like Fridays around here in the East, forget about it. So I get a lot of my emails, a lot of my follow ups and rest of the week done that day because people want to meet probably Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So it just helps you out with that. But try something, just start something um, and, and see what works for you. Okay. Um, Next question, going down the ride here. Uh, Lysandra, hello, Lysandra. What things would you recommend I can do to get as many leads as possible and also track those leads when at a trade show? I have a baking business that specializes in desserts for weddings and special events. We attend trade shows to increase awareness and get leads to offer our services for weddings. What things have you found that help get leads while at the show? And then how do you track after the show? Do you give giveaways, offer discounts, up to all ideas? Listen, every time I see a business card, I look at it as a ching ching. And that means a business card is may not be a person that you talk to today, may not be a person that you talk to next month, but it could be a person that you're talking to literally in five years that's going to bring business for you. But the idea with those, um, those cards is setting up some kind of system that you follow up with them. Now, when I first got started, I did everything on Excel and I just had this huge Rolodex. Remember, I'm a visual learner. So I would actually have this Rolodex of all these cards and when I got them. And then what I would do in back of the card is basically when I got that card, when did I meet that person? Because sometimes that person comes up, I'm like, oh yeah, I met you at that bakery conference in uh, 2022. Um, and having that memory will really help you because I have so many cards, but I don't always remember all the events that I remember these cards are from. And if you get, all you need is a first name and an email. <clears throat> and once you start sending out just small, what you can do is the great thing about uh, Microsoft Outlook, it has a thing called mail merge. And if you go to the wizard in mail merge and all too, and you drop that down, it'll actually show you how to do a combined email message so that it goes out to like a hundred people, but it's individualized and it's personalized. So it'll say, Hey, dear Tommy, you know, so great to meet you at the bakery conference. And I love for you to take a look at our website. We're doing these offers for like for cakes and this and that. And don't forget, you know, the holidays are coming up. I'm not sure if you're thinking about how to treat your, your clients, but we do these really cute client gifts during the holiday season. So if you're interested, just click this link and let us know. And you know, Excel is the best thing to do it. You can do it where they all get their individual message. It can go out to 100, 200 people and they all think it went out just to them. That's the beauty of mail merge. Um, and then you can get that email in there. So now listen, when I first did this, um, I made a boo-boo and um, it didn't come out very well. So what you might wanna do is send it to yourself first and set it up that way and see how that, um, that looks like. Um, and the nice thing about it is once it goes out, you can go into your sent um, messages and all those people will be in your sent messages as well. So you'll have access to all that. Now, what you don't realize is all, what I would always do is do a fishbowl for, um, you know, um, you know, all these business cards, but you want to, you're a tasting place. I mean, people love to taste test, like it's down the shore on the boardwalk, you know, how they get people to buy a lot of fudge. They give out little pieces of fudge 
And then all of a sudden you're walking by and you have that little piece of fudge and you're like, mm, I want another piece of fudge. And next thing you know, like, well, you know, I don't need a pound of fudge, but I'm going to get a pound of fudge because that was yummy. So you got to think that way in regards to the marketing, just the simple things still work. I keep it simple um, and have like little pieces where people touch, you know, taste it, but have it where they're like, they're tasting it there. I know a lot of people are weird right now, but everything's all put into like little sample packages and they take it with them. Well, anything to get them to come and stay and taste is really going to help you in regards to that. So think of something to do. Um, or maybe, you know, like, you know what Pepsi did like long time ago with Coke? They had the taste, you know, taste challenge and all. And maybe you stuff like this taste challenge of like, you know, like help us pick the favorite cake of 2022. And you'll have people basically pick like four different pieces of cake and they put their little thing in because they think they're helping you. And, um, you know, and you can actually say, hey, by popular demand, this cake is back again, voted most popular at conference, you know, ABC in 2022. Um, and that might be helpful. And then because they're tasting it, they're like, mm, this is delicious. You just got to be careful, I'm sure, if people have any allergies and stuff like that. But, um, you know, these things can happen. And I think it'll be helpful for you. Another thing is holiday gifts are coming up and people love sharing something from the heart. And I think cake spells heart for me and I like anything yummy. Um, and I think it's also something if you can have them and then you can actually get ribbon of that company's name. It's really simple to do. And then tie all them stuff up with their ribbons. And you, I don't know if you can ship it out or how it works and all too, but those things really do help and people love it. If you make their lives easy at the holidays to get that out to their clients, the easier you make that, the, oh, you will have more business than you can imagine because people dread thinking about that. I know we do, um, but it has to be done. Here's our list. Here's our people. And now we just send out to um, our chocolatier and he takes care of all that stuff for us. But these chocolates are really good. Um, so I'm hoping that helps you a little bit, but definitely Excel spreadsheet, mail merge, use your outlook in there keep it going and then follow up on those messages when they come in um and then you want to do that like you know every quarter or you know you know say hey are you interested in joining our newsletter and try to get maybe a, a quick newsletter it can be constant contact it could be so many simple things out there guys um or even saying hey just welcome flavor of the month and you send it out to a blind copy that goes out to like 300 people you're still getting your name out there and getting it visible but you got to make fun facts you know i was in starbucks this morning a new starbucks that i had in the bottom like did you know and it had like four really fun facts of coffee and i thought that was really cool so maybe you could do some fun facts about cake and you know about this and did you know that number one popular cake is chocolate and number two is vanilla and blah 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 and confetti is a new thing um i didn't realize coffee um was created by a farmer whose goats loved eating the um the coffee beans because they made them like have more energy and i'll start to like see something i knew i didn't know today people love learning so things like that will help you too but any kind of creative stuff if you want to talk offline um, all ears. I love that stuff. And um, I started literally with just a spreadsheet and business cards. And just I just kept in contact with them. And every time I look at a business card, I see ching ching. Um, because I feel as if it's an opportunity to basically be in front of somebody. And you have to constantly do it though. So it's like you got to figure out is it four times a month or whatever. Not to be an annoying person, but I always tell people about things they don't know. So they're more eager to read it. Okay. And here we go. But good luck. And Roselli, hello Roselli. What are the best ways to discuss work performance concerns with team members in a way that will help them improve or they feel frustrated? You have an accounting firm. When a team member gets stuck with a client's work, I jump on a call with them and resolve the issue almost immediately. I have seen them get frustrated and embarrassed with themselves. How can I better these conversations? Um, so I've been there. I totally get it. What you want to do, Roselli, though, is you got to sort of train them and teach them. So you might want to have them on calls with you as well of what works well, what doesn't work well. They were, they're going to pick up on everything you say, everything that you do, everything. And, um, and you're going to have the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there are times when you want to interrupt like, hey, I did this the other week with one of my executives and I just sat there, I moved into the conversation because I could tell my client was going to get frustrated. And then you know what I did afterwards? I said, did you know, did you see what I was doing? I wasn't trying to overstep her. I was trying to help her. I think it was getting, she was getting frustrated. He was getting frustrated. And I just wanted it to be a win-win conversation. 
And so I went in there more of a teaching, you know, a coaching exercise. Hey, I said, I saw that. I said, here's what potentially might be a really good idea for future. And you want to share experiences with them because they need to know that um, you're normal as well. And so what I typically do when I do that, I usually I give them an example of something that went wrong for me. And then basically what had happened, and how we fixed it and how I learned from it and how it's not a negative. It's more along the lines of a coaching thing, because if you're constantly jumping in to fix things, they're never going to learn. So you're going to have to do it delicately, but you're going to have to do it where they realize that you made mistakes. And then also include them on calls that you do so that they can learn how to basically maneuver through that for future. Um, so these are some of the things I think you want to do because they can get very frustrated with that. And then they're going to feel as if they can never do anything right. And that is the last thing you want, especially for an accounting firm, because it's so hard to find new people right now. Um, so it's more like, um, hey, great job on this. I would say next time, let's work this on that a little bit, but you're definitely getting in the right direction. They just need to hear that constant pat in the back. Um, right now. So don't always be the fixer. It is really hard for us because we're entrepreneurs and want to fix everything. Um, but sometimes you got to pull back and they fall down a little bit and you're going to help them get back up. Um, but you're going to let them know uh, what worked well, what, what didn't work well, and then remind them that you're human as well too. Okay. But don't be the fixer too much because uh, we tend to fire on you. Um, all right, Leanna. Hello, Leanna. How do I find money to pay for things as a new business owner? When cash flow is super tight and we just don't have money for certain things like websites, marketing, etc. So here's your background. I've been trying to set up the website myself, but it's been very difficult. I've checked YouTube, how to videos, tutorials, but it's too confusing for me. I've looked into Fiverr, but I'm hesitant. I know I need a better e-commerce website and some other things for the business in order to grow sales, but I feel stuck knowing how to get it done and pay for it. What do you suggest? Um, Leanna, I don't know where you live. Um, but I can tell you, um, I'm outside of Philadelphia, and so there are schools like University of Penn, Temple, Drexel that have small business development um, areas that will actually help you get up to speed on for free. And they have students that are trying to like you know show their stuff, and they're willing to basically do a lot of the stuff for free for you. So you definitely want to try some of those avenues first, so you don't feel so frustrated. I think that's really important. I also think it's important too that you work with your chamber of commerce and see what they come up with. Um, there's also uh, we have a small business development councils too with a lot of our chambers of commerce to help um, smaller entrepreneurs get to that next level. And sometimes they can give you a massive discount on all that. But there are a lot of schools, a lot of kids who would be so eager to do that for you to get the experience and the exposure and to put something on their resume. So before you get frustrated, definitely focus on one or two schools that have, you know, like web design and digital marketing and see, you know, um, talk to some of their professors and talk to them and say, do you have a small business development council here? Um, this is what I'm trying to do. Can somebody help me? And you'd be surprised at how many people are willing to help you. And like I said, for free, um, but you just got to ask the question. But I would focus on that. Now, if you don't have any schools by, like I said, there's got to be a chamber of commerce or you could actually go online and try, you know, certain areas and just ask, you know, um, free website um, designed for small companies and see what comes up with it. Um, because again, a lot of these students are looking for that exposure out there and a lot of them didn't really have great internship experiences and all. And the more that they can do on their own, the better. I like Fiverr. I think Fiverr is, you know, um, it's a it's a risk, it's a chance, right? But I do think that um, there are some really good ones out there. But it's you gotta like just find them. So um, try those routes to see what happens for you. But there are so many free sites right now out there, right, to help you out. Just gotta ask that question. And okay, and then back to Kelly. Um, how do you deal with feeling vulnerable and anxious after letting everyone know? about your business and what you are all about. You strive for excellence as an excavation company specializing in trenching. I feel really vulnerable right now and super anxious. I'm going to all general contractors, the city halls, call file, residential builders, social media platforms, and generally letting it all hang out, trying to land a subcontract. I didn't expect to feel like I am now. Now, I can totally understand about being anxious. Um, it, it's a t The world's a little bit weird right now. 
I think a lot of people are anxious, so do not feel alone. I don't know if, if you, how much you're using Sean's network, but he has wonderful groups that you could talk to other entrepreneurs about just feeling like you're, like you're together and you feel as if like there's someone to talk to and, and there's that kind of relationship. But that's really important so you don't feel alone. Um, I would say you're letting it all out there, but you, you can't tell them everything. And what you want to do is share your story. And I get asked that all the time, um, tell me your story. And so what I have found out is I don't, I go through the good, the bad, and the ugly, but I also go through the trial of, of me growing up and my parents, my dad was a blue collar. And I just, I, I just made a pact when I was 13 that I was tired of constantly hearing about no money. And I was tired of that, of not having money. And I started having good jobs and mowing lawns and things like that. And, um, you know, and my dad had that story. I remember he dropped me off at school and he said, okay, I'm, I'll be back. And I was the only kid at orientation with no parents with me, but I survived and I found my new roommate because of it. And, um, and he said to me, I'm a nobody and I'll never forget that story. And I just said, they're like, why? And he said, because I don't know anybody and I'm not going to be able to help you at all in your career or what you're trying to do. So you're going to have to figure it out all by yourself. And I just sat there like, okay, duly noted. And so I had to go outside of my comfort zone. I was super mega shy and I started um, just asking questions, getting to know people and making them comfortable and trust me. And I think I can talk to basically anybody now because of it, but does it mean I love it? No, I'm still shy, believe it or not. I just know that I need to do that to survive. And um, so when you do that, you want to have a story where people can like, feel that pain with you and because that's going to build that trust. But you don't want to share too much. You know, one thing I learned very early on, I used to share like everything. I would share my financials and blah, blah, blah. But people don't understand that. They just like your employees, they will understand um, what's my bonus. Oh, we did great this year. So what's my bonus and how much more am I getting next year? Not realizing that, oh, the, the benefits went up 20%. Oh, um, our rent went up 20%. Oh, um, expenses went up 20%. And basically, my gross margins are like down to two. So I don't have that extra to do all that, even though we had revenue here or and in that income here. So I stopped all that and I share more like the revenue side of the house. And I tried to teach them and train them about all the expenses we go through and what we're doing. Um, but it took many years for me to do that. And you want to have your story where people really trust you and say, wow, that's a great story. I really want to help you. And once you have that down um, and talk to other people about it, you'd be surprised of how many people will help you more than you can ever imagine. And, um, and that's how it starts kind of a deal. But don't, it's not going to be perfect when you first start up. And uh, listen, I, I still get anxious now. It's been 15 years. And I get anxious, you know, when I see the news and I see what's happening over there um, right now with China and Taiwan. And you know what? I could either let it destroy me or I can conquer it. And so I have this amazing saying that I tell my team all the time. It says um, it controls you or you control it. And I grow up every day saying, OK, I can control my day, what I have right here, right now. What I cannot control is tomorrow. What I cannot control now is yesterday, but I can control today. And so I really go in it saying, this is what I want to do. This is where I'm going to go. And um, nothing's going to stop me. And there were days that it was really hard. I was praying for checks to come in. I was really, um, they were tough. The first five years were tough because I started doing a recession. I didn't, I was selling something that um, I know was needed out there. I didn't love it. I just wanted to always start my own company. And now I do something I, similar to that, but I help companies really thrive and prosper on their HR, on their talent side of the house, which I love doing, you know, but I had to start basically doing retained search, which I didn't love. And you had to be out there and have people believe in you and then trust you with that search. And we did that, um, but it started off and there were times that were really tough. And I realized that I had to be around a bunch of people who were entrepreneurs who were in the same boat as me just to motivate each other because there were days that I'm like, why am I doing this? And there were days when I got offered these great opportunities to work for these amazing companies and I had to turn them down because I kept saying, don't go after the shiny light. Don't be the moth, you know, be the monarch, be the butterfly that you're going to fly around and 
basically be like, um, you know, I can do all this. And so it's going to be tough, but don't give up. Don't give up the ship. That's what this whole group is for. Shauna's done a phenomenal job of getting these, uh, you know, entrepreneurs together to really motivate you guys, to get you up there, to get you motivated. Use this as much as possible. Don't be a shy person out there. Use this group to your advantage to make sure that you have there because we're all in this together. But you know what? We're making it happen. We're doing it. And, you know, I, I was I saw a 10 mile um, uh, walk well, run this weekend down the shore. And, you know, like one of the few last people were going by me and they looked so disgruntled. And I said, congratulations. I'm like, you're this far. You're doing it. And I'm standing here. But you did it. And I said, even though you're not at the finish line yet, you still had the courage to do it and you're still doing it. Um, so don't give up on yourself. Reach out to any one of us. I am available. I wouldn't say 24 seven, but I'm available a lot if you need to reach out to me at all for a pep talk. Okay. I'm always here for that. And all right, Eric, here we go. <clears throat> um, is it an HR problem to tell team members to eat breakfast, lunch, and take care of their personal vehicles? We are in the business of giving people their homes back from the invasion of rats. Hi, Eric. That's right. I remember you. Over the years, I've noticed our team members usually don't eat breakfast or lunch and their personal vehicles don't get maintained. This has caused a lack of energy and forgetfulness throughout the day and missed days from not able to drive to work. They get paid over scale for our industry we operate in California. Okay, well, I would imagine if California, um, you probably have certain regulations and I'm, I'm not sure if they're hourly or not, if they're salaried and all too, you know, you could say like, Hey, we expect you guys to, you know, take care of yourselves. And, you know, maybe it's, maybe what you want to do, Eric, is bring in, um, you know, I don't know if you do any benefits and all too, but bring in maybe an expert to talk about why it's so important to do all this stuff and just saying, Hey, how this helps them as a person more than it just helps you kind of a thing. So that might be um, one way to look at it. And also um, take care of their personal vehicles. Well, I hear what you're saying with that. Um, and, you know, maybe you bring on site one day like, hey, free car wash today or something like that. And, hey, how we are, how our image is, is basically how our clients look at us. And so, you know, there's an expectation I have you guys like you're out there representing us. And I really hope that, you know, we have an opportunity to get the cars set up and get it moving. And this is what I'm doing. So, and you know what? Nice times. Well, I've learned right now because I have a larger team. Ask them to say, hey, how, what do you, you know what? I want you guys to decide for more clients and where we're going. What do you think would help? Do you think it'd be helpful to do this? Try to put a team together and have them come up with maybe like, hey guys, we're going to do this um, new health conscious thing to help each other going and going. I need, like, I want to have this person run it for us and do some research and stuff like that. Get them involved. Get them accountable. Um, it, it's pretty amazing. I know when we um, have new hires come on board, we actually have uh, through our onboarding that we do in um, person or on Zoom, we have a one page of we call it Zoom etiquette, and um, and now we call it Zoom slash client etiquette, where there's an expectation when you go to a client. You got to look the part, you got to like, you know, act the part. And even on Zoom with my own team, like I, I won't accept somebody wearing a tank top. Um, that's not going to happen. I also tell people to put their video on, you know, and I also know too, like when I'm at the office, like I noticed that too, like I, I'll park my car, um, you know, um, I do the back end first. Now all of a sudden everybody's doing their car back in first. So I need to let that set that example. I also know that I usually um, try to get my car washed every two weeks because I'm out meeting clients. I've noticed that my team is getting cleaner cars, which is pretty cool. Um, I've also noticed like my appearance and now their appearance, but you know what? I'll say to them, like you are definitely one of my rock stars and I really think you're, um, you know, how you present this company. And I'm so glad that you're here. And when they look great one day, you're like, man, you look awesome today. You look like an executive and yada, yada. I started doing that with some of my team members. Let me tell you something. They are all now dressed up. They are all basically, um, it, it's pretty amazing how it works kind of a deal, but you got to get them involved and get them accountable. Um, you can't tell them to eat but you can provide guidance as why it's so important to eat 
and why in their bodies and help them from getting old and, and basically having heart attacks and stuff like that and why it's all important. So maybe just change the way you're thinking about it in regards to making them feel like it's even their idea. And, you know, hey, guys, I thought about we should be doing this. That's a great idea. So things like that might be helpful. But if you do need any help, or just let me know. I'm around. Um, Kristen. Hello, Kristen. What are some ways an entrepreneur who is in a stage that requires working 60, 70 hours a week can also plan some downtime for thinking of fresh ideas? The amount of time I'm working on growing my online business is not sustainable, but necessary for now. I also know that when I have some free time, I'm better able to come up with innovative solutions. Um, totally get it. Um, when I first started, Kristen, I, I literally was working 70, 80 hour weeks. And you know what? Um, I, I gotta tell you, I, I loved it, but I was cranky <laughs> and my family told me I was cranky and then I was getting angry because I wasn't um, doing things I love to do like walking. And so I literally had to change my calendar and do it end of the day because I felt like I had to take care of everybody and everything. Um, and I would put it between five and six, but then I would do phone calls between five and six while I'm walking so that I took care of myself. But then I would leave a half an hour of that time just listening to music and taking in the trees and the flowers. That was my most creative time. And I could tell you during COVID, um, I would go walking with my husband and sometimes we would just, we would just be quiet and walk. And some of my, three of my top things we do now, those ideas were creative during those walking periods during COVID. And I had to do that. So I'm pretty anal about keeping my walking routine now. And I make it a game for myself to hit uh, 10,000 steps on a daily basis. Do I hit it every day? No. Do I hit it probably five days a week? Yes. Um, and I'm kind to myself. I don't beat myself up on it because there's going to be days like that. You have to put that in your calendar. You will be more productive because of it. And if you, if you do some research on like super successful entrepreneurs, all of them really have exercise as part of the equation and they've made time for it because they realize it's almost like fuel for them to do even more and do better. But it's really hard, like being a mom and I was taking care of my dad and it was really hard to take care of me, but you gotta be real about it. Even if it's like 20 minutes, you gotta set that time aside. If, so now what I do is like, if I watch the TV show, I literally have weights that are on my um, a coffee table and I have two of them. And what I'll do is in my pajamas, I stand and I just do my weights in my arms just to feel like I've done something if I hadn't done anything at all. And it just helps. But take care of you because if not, that burnout will definitely come through in many ways. And it did for me. <laughs> so, but I had to fix it. So just a heads up. Um, and hello, Greg, how are we doing? Um, what are the best ways to create a more consistent sales pipeline? You know, I am a, I'm a web design development company. Okay, so Mr. Web Design needs to talk to my person up there who basically needs um, the web design kind of stuff. Um, so talk to Leanna. Uh, so Leanna, definitely talk down to, to Greg. So those two, you two could help each other out here, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, I'm a web design and development company. I network, I get referrals from my partners along with current clients. I get traffic to my website. That flow is not steady enough. I like to figure out a way to get more leads without spending or on advertising. Do you have any suggestions about channels I'm missing? Well, one of the things is try to figure out all your current clients. Is there a commonality? Is there an industry? Is it professional services? Is it IT? Is it construction? Figure out what you're really strong at and then work with your chambers of commerce and talk about like, go start going to meetings, start getting involved with that. People trust people that they do business with. So I used to, I would get involved a lot of that kind of stuff and then really focus on what I was really good at. So after like three years, I realized, oh, well, wow, like 80% of my business professional services. So I ended up being more like a subject matter expert in that world. And what you might want to do is once you start doing that, doing your trends and figure out where that's coming from, is start doing like um, like web, you know, do Zoom like um, subject matter expert things out there where you're becoming the subject matter expert on that area. And so like during COVID, we came up with a thing called um, 
uh, talent talks and HR access, which is basically all my directors of talent acquisition and all my directors of HR, we would get them together as these roundtables and be like that conduit to get them together to talk about topics, trends, ideas. I bring in speakers and all too. And I can tell you probably at least 50% of those people I eventually did business with because they knew me, they trusted me. I did that out of my kindness of my heart to help them. But the idea was that they, what I would basically, you know, get in front of 30 people monthly. And it was a lot more conducive of my time because people weren't meeting face to face. But you definitely want to start doing that and have this consistent sales pipeline that way. And now what I do with my pipeline is um, we have a system now, but at the time we just did Excel and we would go through who was responsible for it. And we had dates in there of like, the beginning and the end. Then the nice thing about sales pipeline and it really works is start getting articles out there that people want to read. And it could be right now it's all about the economy, the slash recession, non-recession. Um, and if you start sending them out to your potential candidates and all or your clients, they really appreciate that because you're not selling them and you're keeping them apprised of what's happening out there. Works for us nine times out of ten. We get more business out of that. And you, like I said before, the beginning of the session here is you can do that mail merge. So you're sending this out to all these different people and say, hey, I thought you thought this article would be helpful. That's all. You're not selling anything. It's nothing major, but it does help. And that's going to help you get more of a consistent sales line. I also have about four people out there who I call my mini marketers um, that I've been very clear about what we do and how we do it because they're constantly meeting other people for what they do on their sales. And so, um, we share leads like that and that's been helpful too. So it takes a little bit of time to get it really rolling and get it moving, but make sure you have somebody working with you on sales pipeline because you've got to be consistent with it on a weekly basis. And that's how it starts to grow and work starts really coming in through all that. And then figure out where that business is coming from and keep, keep track of all those trends. It's really important. A lot of people don't do that. And that to me is like, it's money thrown out the door if you don't do that. But uh, if you have any questions, give me a buzz. Greg, Hello, Greg. Should I set up KPIs for my business and why? Again, um, I know web, you, are, you basically do a web design development. Um, I've introduced KPIs, but I currently don't use them. Okay, why not? Uh, that means you don't trust them or you don't believe in them. So I am a huge metrics person. You have to measure everything. Um, and so I do. And I think it's really important, but you have to set KPIs more along the lines of like, are they doable? Are they realistic? You know, smart goals basically. And I really believe into, you know, what you have to figure out what makes sense for you. You might want to talk to somebody on Sean's team to really help you set those things up. And that's really going to help you get it moving. But I highly, highly recommend you do that. You might want to talk to other web design companies too. I'm sure there's a huge um, slew of them out there and ask them like, what are your KPIs? What do you measure? And they're going to give you ideas of what you want to measure, what you don't want to measure. Why create the wheel when it's already been started? Um, but it's really important that you measure something. It took us several years to get to where we're at right now, but we probably measure about 10 things. And I get reports on a weekly basis because of it. And I live by those reports because it helps me understand, are we on target? Are we higher? Are we lower? Do I need to have more conversations? Do I need to do more sales? Are we going to hold up right now in recruiting and hiring? So it really helps us keep track of our goals. And again, those KPIs are going to help you get to your one year, your three year and your 10 year goals as well. If you stay consistent, I love it when someone says to me, we're going to make $200,000 this year. And then there's no plan of action. I'm like, well, are you going to do that all in one month? Or are you going to do that? If you were real about it, how much on a weekly basis do you need to be making to hit that 200? And of that, how many deals do you have to make to make that happen as well? Because there's usually a commonality that you happen basically when you first start and get it going. But that you might just need some hand holding on that and definitely reach out to Sean and his team because I know there's some people that can help you with that. Okay. And then Michael, hello, Michael, which is all, which is overall a better project management platform, Trello or Monday or others? Um, Michael, there are so many project management platforms. Um, the thing is you just got to find one that you stick with and that you do because junk in, if you don't put anything in, you don't get anything out. And there are people that you'll have in charge of this who either love that detail or they hate that detail. And so be careful what you wish for. 
I would say if you never had a project management and if, if, if money is an option, find out what's the easiest platform. Like if you're using Microsoft Office, they actually have their own platform as well um, that people actually use and, and you got to figure out why. So you want to make sure that, um, you know, is it worth the investment? Are people going to use it? Is it what you really need at this time? And it's amazing how everybody has its unique way of their own systems. Um, and like for me, like that would be just uh, painful for me because I write out my days and stuff like that too. But to also write it into a project management plan, I'd like shoot myself. I'm just not that person. I'm that vision person, guys. So you're looking at the integrator here. Um, so you're going to have to figure out what works best for you and your team. And then you got to figure out who's going to manage it to make sure stuff is really in it. Because what I have seen happen is that people get lazy and things aren't always in there. And then all that money you just spent was like, for what? So make sure you find a system that's just easy, manageable, and people will do. That's my biggest thing about buying systems as it is because a lot of people don't pay attention to it. And then all of a sudden you have all this money on a system that nobody uses. So be careful about that. And my last question of the day is Ricardo. What are some practical ways to show team members appreciation? I own and operate a barber shop with three other barbers. I want to continually show gratitude and appreciation. How can I practice have it without breaking the bank? Well, I can tell you they're on their feet all day, right? And so one of the things you might want to do is like, you know, foot pads, or maybe have somebody come in in the day and do reflexology on their feet. Um, maybe one day you just bring lunch in. Maybe just saying thank you. Um, maybe have little cards, you know, um, and just be like, you, you did a great job yesterday. I really appreciate you being here. It's so simple, but it means so much to people out there. Um, so things like that's really helpful. I think they like surprises too, because I would imagine being a barber, it's like, you know, it's a lot of the same old, same old, right? So maybe some kind of thing and maybe find out what they want to do. We used to have a little program called Little Wishes and Little Wishes were basically, um, you know, we would give $100 to the charity of their choice that month. And, um, you know, maybe it's like something really dear to their heart and just saying on behalf of you, we're going to be giving $100 because this means so much to this group. Stuff like that goes a long way. Um, the lunches always go a long way. Um, you know what we do too, if you're running low on money, I always had a crock pot lunch. I know it sounds crazy, but people love those crock pot lunches because they felt like they were bringing a piece of them in, um, which would be helpful. But I do think the foot doctor, uh, the foot reflexology um, would be helpful for you as well. Um, I think though, um, the smallest little gestures mean a lot to them, but you might want to ask them and get to know them really well. And maybe it's also too, it's like saying, hey, um, you know, dinner on me and, you know, take out, you know, your, you and your spouse or whatever. And, um, you know, I don't know, make it fun. Maybe like a fishbowl where they, you know, pick out one day a month of like fun surprise. And it could be all the way from, you know, having a pack of M&Ms or, um, you know, um, the fish, or it could be basically um, having somebody come and, and it's a free car wash. You can make it really fun. It doesn't have to be a lot of money. The biggest thing and the best thing you could ever do is just say thank you. And I do my cards to my people. Um, I know I do them at the holidays. I send out a birthday card and anniversary card um, every month to my people who, who are in that month. And I, it still goes a long way. And people just really seem to enjoy that and appreciate that. So um, you can be as simple as possible on things. You can even put on their wind, like their mirrors in the morning, like good morning, sunshine, and you guys are awesome. I mean, things like that, they still go a long way. It doesn't have to break the bank. I mean, I had zero money my first three years and my consultants, I really appreciated. So I would always say just thank you to them. I would just like, I would try to take them um, to dinner or just something like that to say thank you. Um, but now even the small little things like my phone, I think your phone's like one of the best things that you guys have that you could just send a quick little snippet, like a small video and like, hey, just I saw this out here today and I thought you were just gonna let you know that I thought you did a great job. I love that haircut of that person. I don't know what I do without you and hope you're having a great day. Things like that actually go a long way. So don't make it look like a huge expense. Try to be creative out of it and actually ask them what you know what were they like because sometimes they never never ask them and i think that'd be a pretty cool thing to do but keep me posted about how that goes okay um that's it of questions guys for today and it's been a 
about an hour time frame here. So I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of us. Oh, here you go. Hi. Hi there. Okay, so Jose, I hope I'm saying this right. Hello, Marcia. I would like to know how to manage people who are not completing their tasks. Not sure it is because the process is not clear because there's not a control system or how to implement this. Well, I think what you want to do is have a conversation with that person and just go through, like, tell me what you think your role is. And I'm going to be like, this is what I think you should be doing as well. And I feel like there's a disconnect here. How can we get you to this level? And I don't know if you have job descriptions or not, but they, they do help when stuff like this happens. But then you want to write that down and see, are we clear with this? Okay, great. And you want to make sure they sign off on that too. Like, yes, I'm very clear. And you're going to say, okay, in seven days, let's see how you're doing with that. And so after seven days go by. And then you want to go into, okay, I don't think we're kind of clear. And then you might have to put them on a PIP, which is a performance improvement plan, which is something of like, I need you to do this and this and this within 30 days. If this doesn't happen, I'm just giving you warning that this might not be working and we might have to separate. Um, but you definitely want to make sure you're very clear about that and sit down with them and just ask them like, you know, hey, um, I think we're on a different wavelength here. I wanted to sit down and figure out what you think your role is and what you're doing. So th that's what I would do to start things off. And if you need any help, um, as I just reach out to me um, anytime, M O'Connor, M O C O N N O R at then it's six letters T O C G R P dot com. OK. Um, any other questions out there, let me know, guys. And um, thank you for your time today. Good to be back. Happy summer. Stay cool. Enjoy the last um, few summer days or a few weeks of August, and uh, we'll see you in September. Okay? Think positive thoughts, guys. Positive thoughts. All right. Talk to, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.